Welcome to another week and welcome to another video. I want to wrap up this idea this week of reflection pools and reservoirs. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, there will be a link somewhere around uh, where you can go back and watch the three previous videos that we have had this conversation, this idea of reflection pools and reservoirs and uh, as pictures, what that can help us uh, to think about in our following of Jesus. And I want to round out uh, this idea thinking about reflection pools. Uh, again, remember we're not comparing them, it's not better or worse, they are different things and they are doing different jobs. So this idea of uh, a reflection pool and what it is and what it does is going to help us, is going to give us some meat on these bones of uh, following Jesus and how we engage with each other in unprecedented times, uh, changing times, things that are going on that are outside of our control but our reaction and our response to some of those things are firmly inside of our control and it's helpful to think about who we are uh, in these moments not to make that our sole focus and our sole drive and not to um, get lost in in thinking about who we are but we need to take some ownership and responsibility of our thoughts of our words and of our actions and so that's where we are coming from that's what we are thinking about that's what we are driven by uh, with these ideas as we engage with uh, reflection pools and with reservoirs. I know you know this but so that we have a, a shared picture and a shared idea. Uh, a reflection pool is uh, something that is ornamental, it's usually in a public uh, space and it's to draw your attention, to draw your eye to the thing that surrounds it and um, the reflection pool is, is quite underwhelming in and of itself that it's just the shallow um, pool of water but it's designed and placed in such a way that uh, what's around it is seen in the surface of this water. What's that got to do with us? How does that help us? Uh, I wanted to speak to some of our frustrations a little bit. I think there are some things that we can be motivated by that perhaps aren't always that helpful or that useful but being uh, fueled by our frustration it doesn't allow us to reflect the glory of God that well for that long. I think the things that we can get wrapped up in that perhaps we can feel that we deserve or we are entitled to, so that might be a way of life, that might be uh, a certain object or thing, that might be uh, just a, a way that we condition our existence and we can get driven by some things that are not helpful and maybe not that great for us and, and perhaps are not going to put us in the best position uh, to reflect the glory of God and so out of that position of frustration we can get caught in this loop and this pattern of behavior that we end up with a bad attitude and a bad attitude is going to feed uh, some bad thoughts and some bad thoughts are going to feed some bad actions and then guess what bad actions are going to feed our bad attitude and it's this self-perpetuating cycle of frustration that we get caught up in when we feel that we're not getting what we deserve and then for those that are gathered around us when they are observing our existence what they do not encounter is a reflection of the glory of God. They get an earful or a mouthful or they uh, encounter our frustration, our dysfunction and our uh, kind of disillusionment with things not going the way that we want them to go. As people apprenticed to Jesus, that's not okay. That's not who we are. That's not how we work. That's not how the Spirit of God is working in us and through us for God's glory. And so uh, I want to bring just that pattern to our attention and I want to encourage us to challenge it and to change it. I want to encourage us that we don't have to stay stuck uh, in these rhythms of a bad attitude, bad thoughts and bad actions that actually we, we can change that. We can do something about that. We can draw our focus onto that and it's not through a sense of entitlement that if I amend that that then I will get what I want. It's not uh, through this idea of that I am a problem or that I am an issue or that that I need to be removed from the process in order for God to have his way. We don't believe that either. We believe that the Spirit of God works in and through the body of God for his glory. And so it's important that we get a handle on ourselves. It's important that we allow the Spirit of God to renew us and to change us, to challenge us, to move through us so that what we reflect is God's glory and not our personal frustration. And 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And we all with unveiled face, and that statement seems strange in isolation but you need to read the rest of chapter 3 that's going to give you some context and an understanding for for that reference and we with unveiled face reflecting the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to the other for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit what does that mean what does that 
have to do with reflection pools or does that have to do with uh, the the power of frustration being given over to the renewal of the spirit of god in us i think it means a few things but this is what i want to speak to us about the holy spirit wants to work in us as we follow jesus through an environment of reflection not restlessness that when we take a moment to think about who god is i have to give over my frustration and allow the spirit of god to change me as second corinthians is, is talking to us about by degrees in increments the promise of that transformation from one degree of glory to another to another to another as i think about who god is and what he has done as i focus on who jesus is and the reality uh, of what he has done the life that he has made available as i am reminded that the spirit of god is alive and in those who turn to god that i am being changed and i hand over the ownership of my frustration that is going to fuel the patterns remember of my bad attitude my bad uh, thoughts and my bad actions i'm going to transform the the patterns in those things that when people interact with me what they uh, encounter is not a mist of fog of disruption of uh, trying to find a reflection in a surface of something that is rippled and is distorted but instead there is uh, a stillness in the surface that's important to us we're driven culturally by this busyness by if something isn't happening i need to go and make it happen if i'm not getting what i want i need to go out and i need to go and get it and we can create and we can produce these ripples in our surface all the time and we get frustrated where where we are not growing where we feel we are not achieving where we feel we're not getting the things that perhaps we want or we feel that we need and i want to encourage you that the the kingdom of god works the other way around to the kingdom of this world and so if you are feeling drawn into patterns uh, of frustration just just check what what your surface looks like is it distorted are there ripples in it is there movement from your frustration are you being fueled by the things that you want to achieve and that you want to attain and that you want to get a hold of and that you want to make happen because i feel confident that the spirit of god changes us to make us like god in an environment of reflection ahead of restlessness we're going to take five minutes to pray uh, again and as always we're going to count that down so you don't need to go anywhere or do anything that will be uh, shown for you now but in those five minutes i want to encourage you to engage and interact with the spirit of god and and ask the spirit of god to create environments of reflection uh, in you rather and ahead of uh, this spirit this idea of restlessness let's take five minutes and let's pray
as we come to a close in our message this week we always look to a point of action a call to action uh, something that can be applicable from the things that we have thought about uh, you're going to need to read second corinthians uh, i would encourage you in your own time to read all of second corinthians that's never going to be a bad thing uh, and at the very least to kind of help you key into what we're talking and thinking about here uh, i would encourage you to read second corinthians chapter three uh, but beyond that and as you are inspired by that and as you are asking the spirit of god to create an atmosphere and an environment of reflection ahead of restlessness that you connect with each other about that we need each other to help us figure that out it's only collectively when we say i'm going to put my frustration down uh, and i'm not in any tension or fear that then somebody's going to get ahead of me or somebody's going to get something that was mine that i uh, could have got if i'd only had stuck with it or only i'd been a bit more ruthless or if only i'd been a bit meaner or a bit kind of more focused on the things that i wanted remember that the spirit of god is changing us to be like god and so if we are like the prince of peace there's no tension in laying down my frustration uh, it's not about others getting ahead of me it's not about others having the best uh, of me and, and me just kind of silently having to put aside all the the things that that I feel God is calling me to achieve for his kingdom and for his glory. Remember, we are called to make disciples. So this is not about just kind of kicking back and tuning out and what will be will be. It's about a change in the way that we reflect the glory of God. And as we spend time reflecting on the glory of God, we become more like God. That's how good God is. He doesn't work the way that we work. He's not limited to our patterns of thought or of understanding or of making things happen but as we rest in God's ability to supply I want to encourage you that with a reflection pool that water is still but that water is clear we know that if you leave a body of water for long enough it won't stay clear it becomes stagnant that means that things are happening privately and um, things are happening away from the scenes things are happening underground things are happening away from from what is seen and what is visible and what is known and so in the same way our call to action has to address those things in us if we want to reflect the glory of God and we need our surface to be still and to be clear for that to happen then we need to trust God to deal with the things privately that create that environment so check your filters metaphorically check the the flow of what is coming into you metaphorically is it from God are you focused on Jesus or are you focused on yourself or someone something somewhere other than God allow your attention in our call to action to be drawn back to Jesus and help each other to do that so communicate with each other where you feel yep I've got a handle on this thing I am reflecting God's glory well and share that with people and how you have created with God that environment of reflection ahead of restlessness encourage others to let go of those patterns of frustration those patterns of entitlement those patterns of of old ways of thinking of achieving of being as we embrace the spirit of God and allow God to make us more like him by degrees from glory to glory to glory that Jesus will be honored that Jesus will be praised in the way that we do the things that we do so our call to action we've got to connect with each other we've got to find out what we're doing well we've got to find out how we can help each other to create these environments of reflection ahead of restlessness go well wash your hands love your neighbor have a great week and we'll see you soon